Hello again, welcome to class 4 of more data mining with Weka. We're going to talk about attribute selection in the first four lessons of this class and then we're going to talk about cost sensitive evaluation and classification in the last two. So in this lesson we're going to talk about attribute selection using the wrapper method. Do you remember way back in data mining with Weka in the first class? You uh, looked at glass.arf and you ran J48 and you removed some attributes and much to your surprise you sometimes got better results with fewer attributes. Well that was a laborious manual process where you uh, started with all the full attributes set and removed the best attribute by selectively trying all possibilities and then you carried on doing that. You probably remember the pain involved. Well, of course, there's a better way, and that's what the Select Attributes panel does. Uh, so uh, we're going to go and, uh, to Weka, and I've opened the Glass data set. There it is, 214 instances. I'm going to go to the Select Attributes panel, and we're talking here about the wrapper method of attribute selection. And uh, that involves uh, wrapping up a classifier. We're going to wrap up J48, which is exactly what you did back then. Uh, all those weeks ago, I'm going to use tenfold cross-validation, which actually is what you did, uh, although in class one of data mining with Weka you'd never heard of cross-validation. And uh, uh, that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to select a threshold of minus one. I'll explain that later on. And then we have a search method, and we're going to use a best first search, but we're going to search backwards, and I'll talk about that later on, and we're going to have a search termination Yes, we're going to leave that. Okay, so let's just run it. And uh, now it's running, doing all those cross-validations, and lo and behold, it's got the uh, same attribute subset as you got before, and it's got a merits of best subset of 74%. So going back to the slide here, uh, that's uh, really the same kind of thing as uh, we got before. Same subset and the merit is the same as the accuracy. It's a little bit of a coincidence that we got the same results because uh, Weka doesn't do exactly the same thing uh, and uh, you know the setting of the random number generator and so on. But anyway, we did get the same results here in this situation. Uh, a good question is how many subsets we had to evaluate, how many attributes we had to evaluate, how much experimentation we had to do. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna set a search termination to one, and again I'll explain that in a minute, and run it again. And here it tells me that's evaluated 36 subsets. So back on the slide, you can count these subsets. It took the complete attribute set, and then it tried removing all of the nine attributes one by one, that's nine more evaluations, and then it removed another attribute, eight evaluations, and another one, and another one which gave it the final attribute subset. But to check that it was the final attribute subset and you couldn't do better by removing another attribute, you'd have to do a further five evaluations. And if you add up all of those, uh, you get 36 subsets evaluated. So the wrapper method involves uh, an evaluation method and a search method. Let's talk about search. We were doing backwards searching. We started with all nine attributes and selected one to remove and so on and so forth until we decided to stop the search termination criterion. It would be equally viable to do forwards select starting with a zero attribute subset and adding the best attribute each time until you decided to stop. Or you could do bidirectional search. Uh, you could start with some random attribute subsets, and actually Weka does allow you to specify what attribute subset to start with, and then either add or subtract an attribute depending on which gives, uh, gives the most perf uh, performance improvement. Or you could do exhaustive search. In this case, there are 512 possible subsets of nine attributes, and you could simply try them all. The search termination criterion is kind of interesting. Uh, when we did this manually, we stopped as soon as the search, as soon as the results started to get worse. We got a local maximum in the search space. But you might do better by plowing on through that uh, minimum that you get, going a little bit further to see if perhaps you might reach an even higher peak further on. So if you set the search termination criterion to something greater than one, then Weka will try a little bit harder, go a little bit further before deciding to abandon the search. 
Now I'm not going to show you all these different searches, but uh, here's some results. It's a pretty complex process. So I showed you backwards uh, search, uh, and we got that first subset and a 0.72 uh, evaluation. And then we set the search termination up to 5, which gives us a uh, uh, the chance of powering on past a local maximum and find an even bigger maximum in the search space. And that gives us a better evaluation. Or with forwards search, you get that three attribute subset R, I, A, L, and C, A. If you uh, search on a little bit further, instead of terminating the search prematurely, you can get a better subset with a better accuracy. And uh, bi-directional search uh, will give you uh, that that's a three attribute subset, and uh, again, you can improve that by setting the search termination criterion to search a little bit further. So, I note we're always finding a local optimum, but uh, uh, setting the search termination criterion to more than one gives you a chance of traversing a valley in the search space to find a better local optimum. Turns out that on this data set, AL is the single best attribute to use. One R will confirm that for you. And so all forward search results will include AL. And curiously, AL is the best single attribute to drop. So if you start with a full set, the best one to drop is AL. This kind of sounds pretty strange, and I must admit it is pretty unusual. But nevertheless, it's true, and it's certainly not impossible. OK. So uh, let's just go back to Weka here, and I'm going to set cross-validation and see what happens. And uh, what it's doing now is it's doing its attribute evaluation 10 separate times, and it's showing us here how many times this attribute ri appeared in the final attribute subset. So in this case, it appeared in 9 out of the 10 uh, attribute subsets. So coming back to the slide, in how many folds does this attribute appear in the final subset? And you can see that uh, RI and uh, MG and uh, BA uh, appear uh, in ten of the for all ten of the folds, and the AL, SI, K, and FE appear in not too many, two or three of the folds. Uh, so this kind of gives you an indication of the stabi stability of the attribute selection method. And for this data set, it's not really very stable, as we've seen by getting all those different subsets when we tried different parameters of the, of the uh, wrapper uh, method. Uh, if we do forward search, of course, we will definitely choose uh, AL. So uh, uh, this was done with backward search. So the gory details of the wrapper method. In general, Weka, the Weka implementations follow descriptions in the research literature. So these parameters came from uh, the research literature. Uh, it tries to do a five-fold cross-validation by default, not a ten-fold cross-validation. But it doesn't necessarily do all five folds. It does at least two and up to five runs. And it stops when the standard deviation is less than a user-specified threshold. Uh, setting a negative threshold, which is what we did, forces a single cross-validation each time. And uh, the best first search method is the uh, de default, and the search termination defaults to 5 for traversing valleys. Uh, the wrapper method uses cross-validation to uh, select the best attribute to add or drop at each stage. If we go back to Weka, there's another attribute evaluator, which is called the classifier subset evaluator. That allows us to specify a classifier and also a holdout file. So here we will use the holdout file to evaluate the, uh, uh, the, the each subset in turn. OK, so that's attribute selection using the wrapper method. We use a classifier to find a good attribute set. We use J48. Uh, we wrap the classifier in a cross-validation loop. Uh, there are two components here, the attribute evaluator, which evaluates a subset of attributes, and the search method, which searches through the attribute space. Searching can be uh, forwards, backwards, or bidirectional, it, uh, starting from any, uh, any kind of subset. 
Uh, it's computationally intensive. Uh, the n, m squared subsets need to be evaluated for m attributes, and there's an exhaustive method which evaluates two to the m subsets, which you're going to use in the activity. Greedy, search, greedy searching always finds a local optimum in the search space, and you can traverse valleys by increasing the search termination parameter. You could read the section in the course text about attribute selection, and off you go and do the activity, which will give you, which will uh, let you think about uh, the wrapper method and give you some experience in using it. Good luck, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.